But some of you may be wondering, well, how are you fertilizing and feeding them watermelons? Because y'all have heard me say that I'm using my rabbit manure and my rabbit manure tea in my garden this year. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead slash Papa's Place. Guys, today we're going to start out by checking out the watermelon patch. See what the watermelons is looking like and see if we think we're going to have a watermelon before July the 4th. Now guys, some of you may be wondering how this is working because I'm growing my watermelons on top of ground fabric. And I have drip irrigation system run up under my fabric to where I water them. But some of you may be wondering, well, how are you fertilizing and feeding them watermelons because y'all have heard me say that I'm using my rabbit manure and my rabbit manure tea in my garden this year. Well, after we check these watermelons out, I'm going to show y'all how I fertilize these with that, with that rabbit manure tea. So as y'all can see, this is the cantaloupes on this end. This is the sugar cubes. Actually, there's two different varieties in here I forgot. There's sugar cubes and, uh, what is it, Hell's Gumbos or something like that. I have to look that up and put that in the screen for y'all. But you can see they got a lot of blooms and they really green. And there's some little ones up in here. Let me see if I can get over here. And... There's one there. There's one. So I'm needing more of these blooms to turn into cantaloupes. There's a couple small ones. I need some more pollinators. I ain't been seeing many bees or anything this year. like I got a whole bunch of blooms but I ain't got many cantaloupes so maybe that'll pick up but the watermelons these first ones right here is these gold on gold And these ain't large watermelons, so they ain't gonna get to, they, these are what I call icebox style melons. But you can see there's one, two, three. Looks like there's one to two on every vine right now. Three on that vine. I'm just walking around giving y'all a different shot from a different angle. Two on that vine. Actually, that may be one on each vine there because them vines crossed up. It's one to two on every vine at the time. I do see two or three more little bitty babies like that right there. Still a few little blooms. And like I said, I'm trying to rabbit manure tea. I don't know. And these next watermelons down here is the sugar babies. There's one. Two. Three, I don't know, let's see, four, five, six, seven, look like I see about eight. But they ain't got as many on them as they had on them last year. I can tell you that. And they ain't got as many blooms on them neither. 
But like I said, this year I ain't been seeing as many bees out in the garden. And I don't understand that because I got two small beehives. One of them ain't 50 yards from the garden. And there's a little one. So maybe they'll, some of them blooms will turn on to some more. I got a honeybee box right there. It ain't 50 yards from the garden. I don't know if y'all can see them bees coming in and out. But it ain't a big hive. It ain't packed full of bees. But right out there in the corner of my property, there's a hollow tree that's had a hive in it for years. But what's what I'm not understanding is why I'm not seeing more of them in the garden in the mornings. But there's you a shot of the watermelon pack. You can see I'm mowed and got some grass all throwed up in there. I gotta get my leaf blower and blow the grass out. But so far I'm loving the growing the melons on the ground fabric and they ain't growing up in weeds look like a jungle. Now, I may not make as many watermelons as I did last year, but I ain't giving up on them yet. Let's get over here and I'm gonna show y'all how I feed these at rabbit manure tea. Now, I started out trying to push this rabbit manure tea through the emitters on the drip irrigation, but I was having so much trouble with the screen stopping up. It was just taking too long, too much of a mess, fooling with it. You see, I got a screen right here where you connect your hose. But it, it couldn't, it just stayed stopped up. Just steady stopping up, stopping up. Well, you don't want to run it without a good screen because it stop your emitters up. And every time I'd run my rabbit manure tea, I'd have to clean that filter there three or four times, sometimes five, six. And then I'd have to run fresh water through my irrigation system to make sure my emitters didn't get stopped up to keep them flushed out in case anything got by this screen. So what I started doing, I just stretched my water hose out here and I do one row at a time. And I just stick the water hose in one of the holes by the plant and run it up under there and put it over there in the row middle. And then I'm gonna show y'all how I pump it in there. And like I said, I do like one row at a time, which my rows here ain't 50 foot long. And the reason I'm starting back here on the watermelons cause the cantaloupes, you can see they so much greener and bigger. I think when I was pushing my rabbit manure through my emitters, most of it was getting up here at the beginning. And that's why them's growing so much bigger than the watermelons. That's what I'm thinking. So since they doing so good, this last time and these next couple of times, I'm just gonna do what you see me doing right here today. Well, I've done done it a couple of times and it works well. And just let that water run down the middles under that fabric for my watermelons. How I fix up my rabbit manure tea, I just got an old trash can here and I put about two or three gallons of rabbit poop in there. I like for it to be dry, but sometimes it ain't totally dry. And I'll fill that up with water, and I'll let that sit three or four or five days. And even when I get done, I fill it back up. And it's sometimes it'll set a week before I use it. But I got just a slump pump there, just an old slump pump. 
emergible slump pump. And I got it sitting in a bottom of an old jug. That way it won't be sitting down in the rabbit poop and suck all the rabbit poop up into it right off the bat. And I'm going to just set that over in there and plug it up. And that's how I suck my rabbit manure tea and disperse it in, disperse it in my garden. And guys, I know the sun is shining bright, but I can't get out here right at dark and make my videos or right at daylight. I got too much going on. It's always company and people here, so I just have to do my videos kind of when it's convenient for me. But I just set this slump pump down in there. Like I said, I've had this old pump for years and years. I just set it right down in there. I kind of bounce it to make it settle down into the poop that settled on the bottom. And I'm gonna go plug it up. Yeah, as y'all can see, it just sucks it right down. Now, as it's sucking this down, as stout as that is, I go on and start adding water at the same time. That's why I put a lot of poop in there and mix that up stout. Cause I need about a barrel of that on each row or that's what I've been putting about once a week. So that's how I get my rabbit manure tea into my garden. It's simply with a slump pump. Like I said, you can try to use one of them injectors. You can try to run them through your emitters, but you steady gonna be cleaning your strings and it just turns into a hassle and it ain't worth the trouble. So I just water it what I call the old fastened watering way where you just stick the hose out there and let it go down the middle between the plants. Now of course out in that garden I have okra, I have potatoes, and I have some uh, cream zipper peas. Now I don't, I don't give them none of the rabbit manure, I just water them. Now guys, what I do, I walk out there and when I see the water getting down here close to the end of the row, I unplug it, pull my hose out and I stick it in the next row up under the fabric. And I do that until I see water coming close to the end of each row. Next time I do this, I'll start on the row that I stopped on because it'll be starting with stouter rabbit manure tea and work myself back these three rows and then this first row today will get the weakness because of course with me watering it down it ain't as stout as what it started out. You can also do this same thing if you like using water soluble fertilizers of any kind. You can mix it up in your old trash can or an old barrel and you can water your garden the same way like i said that injector that injects which works good on water soluble fertilizer it'll inject it through your irrigation system but i ain't got one of them things because good ones for a gallon one i think's like 125 or 130 dollars now I already had this pump, had this old pump for years. Works good. Don't take me that long to do it. Plus, by doing it this way, I ain't got to worry about getting my emitters stopped up because I plan on leaving that fabric there and them emitters irrigation all down. I'm hoping to get three years out of it before I move it. So I want to take care of my irrigation and not get no trash and get it stopped up so this just for me this just works out better this way I lift my pump out clean the end of my pump off And 
Then I set it down here and I put fresh water through it. Because I want my hose all cleaned out. So when I water through my drill pit emitters, it won't be pumping none of this through there. I sit here with the water hose and I run enough water that I know is going through there that I clean my hose and have my pump cleaned out. Then I go on and add me a couple more gallons of rabbit poop to my tub. Put my time on it. We need to set there till I'm ready for next time. Like I said, a slump pump works good. Actually, you wouldn't need one. That'd be you can buy a cheaper one, a plastic one. This one here was one that was out, we used on a job site. So it's a heavy duty one. But you can buy a smaller slump pump. And they got some of this plastic that'll work just fine for doing what I'm doing here. And they work good. Just make sure when you get done to run fresh water through your pump. Not only to clean your pump out, but to clean your hose out. And of course this hose, guys, ain't used for no water hose or nothing else but to water that garden. So it don't matter that it's got fertilizer or rabbit manure or whatever going through it. But I like flushing it out. Like I said... When I need to just water through my drip irrigation, I don't want nothing in my hose that's going to clog my screen up. So now let's go over here and let's look at where this free fertilizer comes from. All right, guys, out here. In case you ain't been watching and ain't seen how I'm set up, this is where my rabbits and quails are. And I just set them tubs right there up under the cages and that kick collects the poop and yes there's some that don't hit the don't hit the boxes but for the most part it all goes in them tubs the best setups i got is the ones that's set up like this little cage where it hits on this shield and it goes straight into the tub right there and it catches all of it don't none of that get off that's where i put my young quills in there when they bitties and then they move right on up here to the next size cage as they get a little bigger and I got more bitties to go in a smaller cage. And then they grow to this cage. And then when they leave this cage, yeah, you know where they go next. Either somebody's gonna be buying them. If they want to buy some quails, I will sell them some quails, but other than that, they go in a deep freeze. And the rabbit poop comes from these little beauties right here. Now, Miss Renee, if you happen to be watching this video, this is the buck rabbit I'm saving for you. Right there. He was born on 316 of 22. Here's my buck, old Willie. Named after Willie Nelson. And there's my new young doe. That's Dolly. Named her after Dolly Pardon. She ain't old enough to breed yet. She was born on 316. This is actually a sister to that book that I just said I'm saving for Renee. No, it ain't a sister. I'm sorry. They all for different moms. They just have the same dad. So that ain't a sister. Dolly's off of Kelly. And I'm gonna call this and Mr. Renee, he's off of Gwen. And they both off of the book that come up from South Louisiana. His name was Navy. Well, 
But over here, let's look at the little babies. One that got out of the box. How you this morning, Kelly girl? So, Miss Renee, you'll be getting, you wanted three does. I don't know what I got here yet, but you'll either be getting two out of this litter. Or the mud and head back here. Maybe that big fat one there be a doe. Got another one in there somewhere. There he is. They done getting out of the box. They about finna be the age to get rid of the box because they're starting to get out of the box anyway. And here's four more off of Gwen. So, Miss Renee, you'll either be getting two does off of Gwen and one off of Kelly, or two off of Kelly and one off of Gwen. That's according to how it turns out when I sex these. Unless I have some terrible bad luck and don't have no does here. Come out there, hide. Come out here and let everybody see you. Pretty American blue bunnies. don't like me messing with your babies she's getting her mouth full that hay gonna put it back in there she don't like me disturbing what she had going on for them then Reba right here I just put her nest box in there and guys if you raise rabbits I'm trying something different here I'll took a five gallon bucket and if this works out, I'm gonna show you on a video how I cut it and then use the piece that I cut it off to go down here on the end to see if that works just as good as these rabbit nesting boxes. Cause both of my does, until the rabbits get bigger, the kits get bigger, they don't stay up there. She keeps them down on this end when they babies so she can just hop in there and they feed them on this end Gwen and kelly does that so i'm gonna try the bucket style and see how that turns out and i'll keep y'all updated because i know a lot of you raise these rabbits and if you have a another convenient nesting box style that you would like to share, please leave it in the comments below. Cause like I said, I used this bucket on the last litter Reba had, but I had it fixed up a little different. I didn't have the top cut out here. I just had the end open and a shield across the front. Well, she used it, but I didn't like it cause it didn't look like it was giving her enough room. So I kind of cut out this top here to make it look more like a regular nesting box. Cause mine don't have to get, I don't need nothing for them to get on top of back here. Cause my cages, I don't know if y'all can see good. I got what I call bunk beds in mine. My cages is high enough. I'll put them a little shelf up there. So when the kits start getting bigger, they can jump up there. and They like laying up under up there more than they do on the bottom of the cage anyway. Plus, it gives them more airflow. When I got the fan out here running on them, they just like laying up on these bunk beds. So I don't really need a nesting box that they have a place to where they can get up on like some people. Say they need something for them to get up on and get away from the kits. I really don't need nothing for them to get on. I think I made Gwen mad. She's still fixing them beds back the way she wants them. Guys, as you can see on theirs, I got theirs set up with the chutes to where when they poop, all of the poop goes into the tub. I don't have to never pick up no poop off this cage. And that works out real well. Well, guys, I ain't gonna really call it. I guess I can call this a garden update. 
that's what it's going to be called. But all we're going to look at today is was our watermelons, how I go about feeding them that rabbit manure tea. And we got our okra. You can see my okra over here finally starting to come up good, which is just now time for it to be coming. It's been got up there about 14 inches tall. After this little cool spell we having right now passes, I imagine it's going to be hot from then on, and you know okra likes hot. The next video y'all are going to see, guys, is going to be on my potatoes. Now, it may not be digging this row of potatoes, but my potatoes in my bed is over there. One more week, it's going to be 100 days, or right at 100 days. I shoot for 100 days, and they dying down, and we're going to be digging our taters, our red Lesotho potatoes, and seeing how many potatoes we get out of our potato beds. But I hope this little video gives some of you some ideas. Maybe you want to use rabbit manure tea and Ain't thought about a slump pump, how easy it is to get transferred out into your garden on your rows. If you have other ways that you do it, please leave in the comments. I love learning new ways and hearing other people's ways. Because like I always said, I'm not a follower and I don't expect you to be a follower. That means what I mean by that, you ain't got to do something the exact way somebody does, but by watching other people, you might see one little thing that triggers a light bulb in your head and like, hey, I got one of them slump pumps. I'm going to try that. Or, hey, he just gave me another idea. Well, share that idea with me because I may love it too. And that's what I mean by don't be a follower, but you can learn a lot of stuff from different people doing different things. And guys... If any of you like taking little mini vacations without never leaving the house, or you just like me, you don't want to leave the house, but you like seeing different things, go check out my friend, Ricky Ventures. I'll put it in the description below, and I might put a link into the screen here. Go check out his channel. My friend Ricky, he's always venturing and going different places. And some of them places you may be thinking about going there vacation and would like to see a little bit about it before you go but go check his channel out and hit that subscribe button guys and help him out help him reach that 4,000 mark it don't cost you a thing to subscribe but go check his channel out for me and when you go over tell him papa sent you but guys if you're new to my channel and you haven't never subscribed please reach down there and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell don't cost you a thing the best way you can help me out is sharing my videos with any of your friends and loved ones on your social media that you think may enjoy watching these videos that's the best way you can help me and as always i hope y'all have a great day god bless see y'all next time